this video is going to contain massive spoilers for Across the Spider-Verse, so if you're worried about spoilers, be sure to see the movie, then come back to this after you've seen it. Man, Across the Spider-Verse was a huge movie. Super ambitious, lots going on, and of course, tons of customs to make in this video. So, the figures I'm showing here are the non-spoiler characters. Even though we're past the spoiler warning, I still want to surprise you as we go along. So, stay tuned, hit like and subscribe down below, and let's get into the Spider-Verse. Or should I say, Across the Spider-Verse. <laughs> So I like to do these in rough sequential order. I don't always get it 100% right, but we're going to try our best today. That starts us off with Spider-Gwen at the beginning of the movie. And to build her, I went ahead and used the regular legs and torso from the Spider-Gwen minifig from years past. The head comes from Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. And then the hair is actually Lloyd's hair from the Lego Ninjago movie. Although I do believe there are some pieces out there that have more of like a side part that's more accurate but as always with these customs my suggestion is to use the best pieces you have available and so if you have that piece I would recommend it but this is the best I've got so that's what I used. To get the more cartoony look for the head I went ahead and used the Spidey and his amazing friends version of Spider-Gwen with the newer version of the white hood to pull it all together. Building the renaissance version of the vulture is actually pretty difficult because he was really stylized in the movie and I'll admit this is probably the weakest custom of the showcase but what I went for here is trying to get a lot of that like papery color I guess if that makes sense so the wings are probably the most important part and these come from the Wonder Woman 1984 figure uh, that way you kind of get a little bit of gold in there that meshes well with the other colors the torso comes from one of the gremlins characters from the gremlins lego dimensions set but of course you could also use the torso from man bat from batman as an alternative i gave him these kind of off light brown arms that match the legs from the prospector from the lego collectible minifigure series with white hands a beard piece for some roughage around the neck and then this headpiece here which came from some sort of star wars snow trooper over the years but i just found it in my spare parts bin so i'm not 100 percent sure where it came from i'm sure someone in the comments will know though for Spider-Woman, this was a tricky one because she's got like a red and black vest, but in my opinion, there aren't any Lego pieces that are like perfect for that. So what I did here is I used the flipped around torso from Hank Pym Ant-Man. You could arguably use the front too, but I just went with the back because I like it just a little bit better. She's got red arms with black hands. The legs come from the uh, suit from Spider-Man No Way Home. That way you get red on bottom, black on top. You know, there's probably some different pieces you could use there too, but again, I'm just using what I've got here in my collection. The head comes from Bumblebee from the LEGO DC collectible minifigure series, and the hair comes from Monica Rambeau from WandaVision from the LEGO Marvel collectible minifigure series. For Spider-Man 2099, it makes the most sense to use the official Spider-Man 2099 minifigure, and I'll show you what it looks like with the head on there in just a second, but to upgrade it, I used the arms from Captain Carter from the LEGO Marvel collectible minifigure series to add just a little bit of extra detail there. Now, I know I'm not the first person to do this, but the head is from Namor from LEGO Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It actually works out that Namor didn't have the mustache there because it worked out pretty well here, and I just gave him some swept back brown hair. I'd be curious if you guys have recommendations for a better hair piece. And of course, I did say I'd put the head on. So that's what he looks like with the official 2099 mask on. That brings us to Miles. Now, Miles' suit in this movie is probably my favorite of the two. It just looks so awesome. But it has the red spider in the center, but it doesn't actually have anything beyond that. It's a pretty plain suit, so we got to get as close as we can without breaking the Lego rules, so to speak. Although we do break a few in this video if you watch it to completion. So, for Miles here, I went ahead and used the torso and head from the Spidey and His Amazing Friends version of Miles. The legs come from Hank Pym Ant-Man. The arms come from the Surfer Dude from the Lego Collectible Minifigure series. The head is from Finn from the Lego Star Wars line of sets. And the hair comes from Shuri from the Lego Black Panther Wakanda Forever sets. And of course, here's what the figure looks like with the Spider-Man mask on. I do think it looks pretty good, but again, I wish that we could have a more simple version. But with the pieces Lego has given us, I think this is the closest we can get. 
For Miles' mom and dad, these were a little bit tricky to make because they're not like spider heroes that have a little bit easier points of reference, but what I did here is I used some dark blue legs with one of the torsos from the Gotham City Police characters from the Lego Batman movie. Of course, it's nice that he, that had arm printing. Looks like Miles' dad quite a bit. And for the head, it's not as easy to find a head with glasses and a mustache for an African-American man, but the Baxter head from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles works out pretty well, and I topped all of that off with the hair from Falcon from the Lego Marvel collectible minifigure series. For Miles' mom, I used some long black hair, the head and hands from Moana from the new Lego Disney train, and the torso and legs come from Chandler from the Lego Friends the TV series set. Now that brings us to the spot who is our first rule breaker of this showcase. So as you can see, I just took a paint pen and added some spots to him, and I actually modeled it after the Marvel Legends figure as far as the spot placement goes, because you can see like I put one inside the arm, which if Lego ever made an official figure, they would never print inside the arm like that. So basically I just took some spare white pieces, like if I flip it around, it looks absolutely horrifying, but I just took some spare white pieces and a paint pen to it. Um, I know a lot of people have done this, so it's pretty cool that we each can kind of have our own unique version of the spot because even in the movie, his spots are always moving and changing. So I think it's pretty cool that if you were to do this and break the, you know, purest roll and add a paint pen, everybody gets their own unique minifigure. And that's a pretty cool thing at the end of the day, if you ask me. So it's absolutely unbelievable as Lego fans that we got a Lego sequence in the movie. And it's pretty cool that they used some real Lego parts to make these figures. So let's talk about Peter Parker first. I was shocked to see that in the film, they went ahead and used the torso and legs from the CMF Series 2 Harry Potter minifigure. Like, of all the torsos and legs they could have used, that is the most random one, but it works out pretty well, and when it comes to making customs, it makes it pretty easy for us. So that's what I used there. The head, it wasn't anything super specific, so to keep things simple, I used the hair and head from the Lego Spider-Man CMF figure. Y you know, you could make an argument, oh, the hair color is a little darker, a little lighter, whatever. I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. Possible, so you guys don't need that many pieces to make these. Anyways, J. Jonah Jameson does get things to be a little bit more tricky. He uses the hair from Quaritch from Lego Avatar, which is pretty random. The head I picked here was the JJJ head from the Daily Bugle, because I think that that made a lot of sense. And then, of course, we've got this torso piece here, which I went ahead and used the torso from Commissioner Gordon from the Batman. I think that that's pretty accurate to what we see on screen. And then, for my most accurate custom of all, time, we've got the 2021 Spider-Man for the Lego Spider-Man suit in the film. It's pretty much exactly the same. There are some minor differences if you look at, like, the printing and things like that, but overall, it is pretty dang close. And the only thing I added, of course, was the little gauntlet on his left wrist there for when he talks to Miguel. And what I did there is what's called the handcuff trick, where you take a pair of handcuffs, cut the chain off the, you know, center part, and then you just put it back on so that a character can have, like, a gauntlet or a watch or some kind of wrist accessory, which, of course, works out pretty well in this case. So there you have it, literally my most accurate LEGO customs ever. <laughs> So now that takes us to Spider-Man India's universe, and this was a tough figure to build. Just look at the Funko Pop and see how much detail is here. I tried to get as much here as I could, but I do know it's not perfect. What I did use are these legs from Ninjago. I believe they're from Nia, I think is the character's name, but they're just in my spare parts bin, so I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments if that's wrong. The torso is from Spidey and His Amazing Friends with red arms, purple hands, the head from Spider-Man from Mighty Micros, and the hair comes from the new BTS lego idea set shout out to my friend josh who was the fan designer for that set and yes i did go to the lego store and buy that set for a hundred dollars just to get this hair piece after the movie came out r.i.p my wallet Spider Punk is probably my favorite custom in this showcase. Well, other than that Lego Spider Man. <laughs> but to build Spider Punk, I went ahead and used the torso from Mutt Williams from Lego Indiana Jones from 2008. Now, there are some other leather jackets, like a CMF guitar player and things like that. I just like this one, but there are other Lego, uh, you know leather jackets that you could use, so drop a comment and let me know what you're planning to use. I gave him red arms. I used the handcuff trick again with the black handcuffs from the Space Cop from the Lego Collectible Minifigure series, and just as a reminder, that's cutting the chain off between the handcuffs so you can put gauntlets on the figures. He's got red hands, the guitar from Rockstar Frankenstein from the Lego CMF, 
The legs come from the black and red suit from Spider-Man No Way Home from the Poly Bag, as well as from the 4 Plus set. The head comes from Spidey and his amazing friends, and I gave him the blue mohawk from OMAC from LEGO DC. Whew, that was a lot of pieces to get through. Here we have Ben Riley Spider-Man, the Scarlet Spider, and it's hard to imagine getting any more accurate than the one LEGO actually gave us in the bridge battle. So I'm not going to make any updates here. I love this figure all these years later, and yes, he is an expensive one, but the goal here is to give you the most accurate minifigs as possible, and this is definitely how to get that. It was pretty darn awesome to get a speaking line from Josh Keaton as the Spectacular Spider-Man. So to build this, I went ahead and used the 2021 Spider-Man torso for those printed arms. And of course, the dull molded legs on there. And the head is from MCU Spider-Man, just to make him a little different than the Lego version we saw a little earlier in the movie. If I used the same head, they'd be literally the same figure, and we don't want that. So that's what I went with here for Spectacular Spider-Man. So going in sequential order, this is about the time we meet Donald Glover in live action as the Prowler, but hang on, we're going to come back to him in just a little bit. You also meet Spider-Bite around this time, and guys, we have an issue here because Spider-Bite shows up as a hologram for most of the movie, and it's pretty much impossible to build a hologram Lego minifigure, and it'd be even harder to try and, you know, use color pieces because we don't know what those colors are since, to my recollection, we just see her as a hologram. So if we get images that come out or something that I can reference a little bit better of what the suit would actually look like, maybe I'll make a part two of this and do that, but for right now, we're going to skip over Spider Bite just because I really don't know how to make it accurately, and I'd rather not make it at all than make it, like, super inaccurate. Here we have Uncle Aaron from Universe 42, and I used the torso and legs from Tony Stark with some brown hands to match the head from one of the police officers from the Lego Batman movie. I did, however, use the eraser method to take the sideburns off the head because this is the head I use for, like, a Luke Cage custom and things like that, and it came in handy here for Uncle Aaron. And finally, we have the Prowler, which of course has Miles Morales in the suit in Universe 42, which was kind of a crazy cliffhanger ending for the movie. And of course, to build this, looks like his collar got popped down there, <laughs> we used a lot of different pieces. The legs come from Aquaman from the LEGO DC collectible minifigure series. The torso is one of the Wonder Twins torsos flipped around. He's got dark green arms with black hands, a purple cape, a purple cloak piece around the neck here, like, you can get a purple cape in a couple of different places, and of course, this cloak piece came on both of the Wonder Twins, which is handy because of the uh, torso choice there. We've got a purple hood here, which came on Raven, as well as this random character from Nexo Knights, and I used the Black Panther head from Infinity War underneath. Now, remember, we talked about Donald Glover earlier, and, you know, he shows up as Prowler in live action for, like, a split second. So, I used the head from Chadwick Boseman, as well as the hair... Uh, from the Black Panther T'Challa figure and things like that to pull that look together. Now, the thing is, is when we do see Donald Glover, he's kind of like hologramish too, so it's hard to tell exactly what the design and colors are, but it gets the point across just as well. So that's the final figure of the showcase, and let's zoom out so I can give you my final thoughts. All right, guys, well, that brings our showcase to a close. Let me know what you thought, and if you'd like me to try and make every single Spider-Man possible, I can maybe go back and try that. It was just a lot to get done in such a short window of time here. So if you want to see more customs of some of the behind-the-scenes characters or blink-and-you-miss-it characters, let me know in the comments down below, and maybe I'll make a part two. Well, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and maybe check out one of my other videos listed here.